Okay, so first, 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 let's see, we are now in the Tzadim Vayelech, a double Parsha, red. Um, before Hasino, no? Yes. The short partials. But very important. Okay, so the um, the topics that I can give you to select from, I mean to start with, I mean I also want to do something entirely different is this for example. You ready? You remember the beginning of the Parsha talks about it is a very strange thing in a way, in a way, maybe the Ramban will answer the question. Listen, isn't it strange? You think you read the Parsha, right? The Shani. So it talks about there will come a time maybe when one person, one person will hear this covenant and this warning that God is giving you that if you keep the Torah then it will be wonderful and if you don't keep on my covenant then it will be terrible. One person will hear this and he will say, Ah, uh, it doesn't matter really. Let me, I feel like doing whatever I want to do, right? Nothing, nothing's gonna happen, mm -hmm. right? So I want to tell you, God says, that my anger will be kindled against that person, and I will make sure that he is gone. Then, he says, and people will come to see this country, which is destroyed and desolate, all of a sudden, the country is desolate. It's not the person, it's the country. Because and they will say, well, I, I don't know, that's the question, Peter. Yeah, you told, Hashem says he's going to be angry at him, and why is he now angry at everybody? So the people will come and they will say, why did uh, this terrible thing happen? How come God is so angry? So they will say, the answer will be that the people had turned against God and uh, for sake, forsook his covenant, and therefore he has exile them to another country and they're gone and this country is gone, is gone, right? So everybody asks the question, what happened between the transition between an individual who is rebellious and the whole people now being punished and sent out and they are the ones who forsook the covenant, right? So you, you can make up many answers, but it seems like, right, in the, in the parasha, it seems like there's a, sh there's a shift. And the way it goes is like this. Um, I'm giving you this covenant, not only with the people here, but all your children afterwards, and so on and so on. And then it says, if there is among you one person, uh, Pasuk Yud Dalet, Perik 29, 29, 14. 14? Yeah, 14. Okay. 10, 4. You know, there's a terrible thing in English to say 14. You know, they said this, they did a study thinking, you know, that, that uh, Korean kids and Chinese kids yeah, yeah, yeah. study yeah. mathematics much better than, is, than American. Yeah. I read. And you read that? And the, they say, they have a, a language that says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yes. 8, 9, 10, 10, 1, 10, 2, 10, 3, 10, 4. So you understand right away that you're in the tens now, and it's 1, 2, 3, of 10, and then 20, 21, 22. In English it's 20, 21. But we have strange numbers, 11, mm -hmm. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it's, it's confusing for a little baby learning mathematics. So for 10, 4, okay? All right. I like to, maybe we should change the language. It'd be 10, 4, 10, 10, 1, 10, 2, 10, 3, 10, 4, just like 21, 22, 22, 22, why not? Where did, where did 11 come from? That's the same in Spanish. Yeah, but, but we say 14. What means 14? That's, no that's, that's why Spanish people are lousy in mathematics. Diez y cuatro. That's why Spanish people are not great mathematicians. Yes, okay. Like Koreans are. Yeah. And even in the Isaac Newton, who is it? He's an Englishman, right? Yes. He is. True. He's an exception. Who? <laughs> Isaac Newton. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. Sorry, sorry. It's, it's, it's an aside. So 14. So you, you want to read it? 
English, so you will go, go quickly. Yes, so is it. But with whoever is here standing with us. No, no, 14. One, four. Yes, 29. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Is it? Where are we? Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, um, 17. 17. Yeah, I'm sorry. You are right. Perhaps there is among you a man or woman or a family or tribe whose hearts turn away today from being with Hashem our God to go and serve the gods of those nations. Perhaps there is among you a root producing gold and wormwood. Yeah, terrible root. Yeah, whatever that means. Go ahead. And he, and he hears. it will be that when he heard the word of this implication, he will bless himself in his heart, saying, Peace will be with me when I follow the craving of my heart. Craving of my heart. Craving of my heart. Thereby adding the water upon the fish. The what? The, the first. The water. The um, water. The water. Upon the thirsty. Yeah, whatever that means. Yes. Okay. Hashem will not be willing to forgive him. To forgive him. Yes. For then Hashem's anger and jealousy, jealousy will smoke yeah. against the man, that man, and the entire implication written in this book will come down upon him. And Hashem will erase the name from unto heaven. Him. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. So, so we're talking about one person so far, yes. right? Hashem will set it, it will set it aside for him people. aside. Uh, him said it, 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 not him, it. He's below Hashem Lira. Like what are you doing? We'll set it aside for evil from among all the tribes of Israel. Like all the implication of the covenant that is written in this book of the Torah. Okay, so so far. He will take him out of all the other tribes and punish him terribly, right? Because he has done this thing, to go away from the covenant of God. Correct thinking, so far? Mm, probably. So far, the language. So far, right? He's Dilo Hashem Laram, he calls Shita Israel. Thinking. Yes. You agree? I think so. What do you, don't, I don't mean you think so. Do you agree? So far, that it implies we're talking about an individual and the reaction of God to the individual. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think, I think you're right. Um, you, you know. We were talking about a, a, a singular, a, a, an, an individual. Yeah. Yeah. And not only that, he's the low Hashem Laram, me call Shifta Israel. He's going to why, pull why, him out of all the other tribes and I pay attention to him. Well, he's, not, he's not a tribe. No, me call. You're right. From all the tribes of Israel, he's going to choose this guy to punish. Because he believes for evil, evil. For, for terrible. You're right. I mean, from all the people. Okay. Okay. Fine. But that's true. We're talking about an individual. Okay. Now, go ahead. And okay. And the Torah. Twenty-one. The later generation will say, "Your children who will arise after you and the foreigner, foreigner, foreigner who, who comes from come a from faraway from land." land distant land, when they will see the plagues, uh, Plague. plagues of the land and its illness, with, uh, which, Hashem. with which Hashem has afflicted sulfur and salt uh, conflagration of the entire land. Of the entire land. Yeah, go ahead. It cannot be sown. Cannot be sown, cannot be planted. It cannot be sprout and no grass shall arise up right. on it. Like the upheaval of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adam and Seboim, with Hashem overturned in his anger and, and So, wh what's the picture now? Sodom and Gomorrah. What's the picture now? The people, your children, after you, long, long ago, long from the future, and the foreigners will come to visit this country and they will see this incredible destruction, like Sodom and Gomorrah, of the entire country. Nothing grows, nothing planted. Well, how did that happen? What happened? Why the Torah? That's the, my question. Yes, the Torah makes a switch between the beginning, where we're talking about an individual, a person, right? Mm -hmm. And he decides, I'm going to go and do whatever my heart craves, and I don't care. And Hashem says, I will take him, and I will punish him, and I will be sure to never forgive him, and da 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 da. Right? Mm -hmm. Period. 
And then the generation after you and the foreigner will come and see this entire land destroyed and they will say, how come this happened? Well, what happened? To, how did the entire land become destroyed because of this one individual that happened? Exactly. Hashem didn't say that. That, that, that. There was no discussion about all of a sudden the whole people. Talk about any individual. You understand the question? Yeah, for example, uh, seeing Pinky in the land and seeing uh, uh, Russia on the other hand. So, how would be. Yeah, Pinky's a good guy. Why do you uh, have to destroy the whole land? Yeah, exactly. Tzadik like him, why don't you leave him alone? Let him, let him have his farm and uh, take the other guy out if you think you need to. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, I'm uh, answer when we shall shall overturn in his anger and wrath, and all the nation will say. And now they will answer that question. They will say, "How come this happened? What is this?" Yes. Go why? Ahead. For what reason did Hashem do so this to this to this land? Why this wrathfulness of great anger? Yeah. What happened? Bamru. And, and they, they, say, they have an answer. Because they forsook. They. They, they, the people forsook they, right, also, from this they, individual to they forsook yeah. Ed's breed go ahead the covenant of Hashem the God of their fathers, fathers that, that he sealed, sealed with them, them when he took so them out of his way and, and they went and, and they went and worshipped other gods and prostrated themselves to them before them impossible that he a god that let's say it's almost finished you don't finished. know and he did no apportion to them yeah and so God became so angry against this, the land. land to bring upon him the entire course that is written in, in, this, in this book. In this book. And he... And Hashem removed them from upon their soul with anger, with wrath, and with great fury. And he cast them up to another land at this very as day. This day. So quiet. So, so stop there. Yeah? So you understand the problem? Yeah. I mean, is it possible that the... Uh, what, what you call me by the individual meant not an individual, but a, a group. Is that, is that a possibility? Okay. You have to push for that. Uh, you have to twist a little bit. Uh, ish, right? It says, pain yesh bachem, ish o isha, o mishpacha, o shevet, asher lelavavo, pameh. Okay, right? So there will be either an individual, he's pointing out, could be a group, could be a group, an individual, or two, a, a woman, or a family, it says, a family, or a tribe, right? That will decide together, whoever they are, an individual or a tribe, will decide they're going to forsake uh, the, the government, right? Mm -hmm. So I will, so I will turn my face with anger against that person, or or lo yove Hashem slo achlo, right? Kina to by ish hahu. By the way, it says here, right? And I have his jealousy against that person by ish hahu. But okay, so it could be by ish hahu or by shevet or by mishpacha. That's fine. But then what happened to the transition? Still, nevertheless, it's a little bit. He 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 exiles the people. He has made the land desolate. He has become angry at the people who, right? Yeah, maybe it's, it's contagious. It's contagious. Okay, so one thing he's saying is that you start from one individual you just spread and slowly but surely the Torah is not saying that. Yeah. There, there's something missing in the discussion, right? But he is inserting another sentence, right? And after this individual or family in shape it does this and Hashem becomes angry with him, we wanted to put an extra sentence here. And in case all the people are enticed by him to do the same thing, then all the terrible things will happen to the people, right? But we have to write that sentence. The Torah didn't write that sentence. So Pinky may be right. Maybe that's understanding. Uh, how, who, how, Hashem wouldn't punish the entire people because there's an individual or a family. So it's gotta be something happened, right? That's one answer. That's one answer. You have, you have to have, have that answer, but for that you have to write a, an extra sentence in the Torah, an understandable situation where everybody is drawn after that individual, right? However, is there any other answer? Are you saying like uh, Korach, for example? Well, Korach, Korach was punished himself, but not everybody else. The people who went after Korach were punished. The people who brought the stories were punished. No, no, the people weren't punished except those people who, you know, were ready to rebel and uh, wondered, well, no, it's not the same. The people were saved. 
for Augusta. Yeah, Augusta. Any other reason why this could happen here? He says because the people go after this evil, and they all become evil. So then it's bad. And again, you got a whole people thing. Right? So, all this right so, the, you hear that? Want to say that a little louder? Because the, tape, the tape is rolling. So. All Israel. Call Israel. Call Israel. That's another answer to this question. Right? Everybody's responsible. And there is a little bit of a hint of this, by the way. So what well, your answer would be, an individual or a family or a tribe does this right? within the general Jewish population. Sadiqim, like, like, like the thing here. You know, right? right? And people know it. People see it. People know it. And they say, yeah, you know, he's just a bum. You know, and they go on with their life. In the Jewish people, and among the Jewish people in the land of Israel, right? So there is a terrible thing that could happen, right? Not only, he said, everybody else can be like him, so it becomes a punishment for everybody because they become like him. But you're saying, meaning they don't correct him, and they don't punish him, and they don't, they let him. They don't exclude him, and they leave him alone. They, you know, freedom of religion. But when it comes to the covenant of God, right, that he violates the covenant, we're not talking about somebody who doesn't eat kosher meat. We're talking about somebody who said, I want to do whatever I want to do, and he goes up to other gods. We're talking about idol worship in the land of Israel, right? Where is it? Yeah, and he turns away from God and he goes after worshiping other gods that he had, Hashem had told him not to, right? So we're talking about that kind of violation and the people leave it alone. So God wants, according to your answer, God wants people to know. It's your job to make sure that that doesn't happen among your people, right? It's your job to do that. To educate people that they shouldn't do it. And if they do do it, to correct them. And if they do do it anyway, then you have to just exclude them, right, from your community. You have to somehow get out, get rid of this. We're punishing them. We're punishing them. We're punishing them. Especially, so you have to have a vengeance, right? This is in Israel. This is the land of Israel. When you go into the land of Israel, this is what's going to happen. This is, he's talking about, obviously, he's talking about exile from the land. He's talking about the destruction of the land as a result of this. Of course, they're in Eretz Israel, right? So they have an opportunity to execute the law, to, to, to um, make sure that this doesn't happen and people don't get away with it. So it includes a lot of things. Show the man some love and teach him, right? Or, or make sure he doesn't continue, or make sure that you punish him, whatever has to be done. And if you don't do that, and you say, yeah, you know, let him go. And we'll do our thing. We'll do our thing. We'll go to shul. We'll learn Torah. Everything's okay. He's outside somewhere, right? So we would be in trouble, according to the way this goes. If Kol Yisrael that's the explanation of this transition. I want you to know, people, that I am going to take out my anger on that person. But that's not going to be the end, right? All the rest of you are responsible for that, and you will all suffer too, and you will be exiled from your land because you let that happen. That's a horrifying thing. That's a terrible thing, right? But your answer is exactly what some of the Mepharshim say to try to explain this, you know, because he needs an extra sentence. Mm -hmm. Pinky, right? He has to say, and if the rest of you become as bad as him, then this is going to happen, and then people will come and say, how come da -da -da, they'll have this answer, right? But you don't need another answer, right? And I. The, therefore, you will all be punished in the same way as he will if you are the ones who could have done something about it and you did not. We learned about this last week, or two weeks ago, if you remember, when the king 
Yoshiyahu tore his clothing when they found the Sefer Torah. And he says, Arur Adam Ashelo Yakim at Torah Azot Ela Sota. Remember, Kol Divya Torah Azot Ela Sota. So we wondered, what are you, why is the person cursed after all those curses? A curse is that a person doesn't keep all the Torah. So we're talking uphold the Torah. And that is not just pick up the Sefer Torah, but uphold the Torah. People who have the opportunity and the responsibility and the authority, the ability, the talent to make sure that the Torah is kept and they don't do it. Go so far as to say not just that you're not a good guy, but you could be a tzaddik in every other way, but you're arur, the Yerushalmi said. Remember that? So that, we already read that before, right? That the responsibility to do. And this is the whole community that could have done. So it's now we're not talking about only a king or an individual or an authority who can do, who is a ruler. This is a whole community who looks and sees that something like that is done and don't correct it. So they are a ruler. They are cursed. And, and they're cursed with tremendous punishment. You can't live in the land of Israel anymore if you allow things like that to happen. According to this understanding of Kol Yisrael Aredim, in a very serious way. That's so that's so that's awful. That's so, concerns for today. So wait, so so in Eretz Israel, right, where you have the opportunity to do something about it. So it could be in a community that you also have something that you can do about it. In our shul, you see somebody talking. Yeah, but in shul, and you can do about something about it, and you don't let him. And you continue and you leave him alone and he's doing that, so you also are responsible. Right? If you can, if you can, you have the ability to stop something terrible from being done and you don't bother, then you are also responsible for that action. Yeah? What I'm saying is, is this today. for today, because uh, we learned today or yesterday, the Aramians are accepted people that are called uh, uh, Arameans. Who's Aramean? Uh, they uh, speak uh, uh, um, Aramaic in Israel, Aramaic. But they are Christian people. Who are these people? Aramaic, Christian, Christian Aramaic, Coptic, Aramaic. Uh, they oh, yeah. speak there, are Aramaic. In, there are Christians in Israel, of course. Yes, but... Um, but they're not Jewish. What's, what do you want from them? No Jews. But the, the, the state of Israel is receiving them like, like, like a, a citizen, like a, a Jewish citizen. So, so it does make sense. In, in, before another case that the one guy was, uh, when he was no, a child, a he, was, he was born as a Jew, but he converted, uh, yeah, when he grew up, uh, he, he converted to a Catholic, he become to uh, be a priest, and he went to Israel, he asked for the residence of all the papers to be a, an Israelite, and the government said, no, how could be that the Aramaic people, Christian people, openly Christian, could the state of Israel say yes for these guys? Because, because non-Jews are not responsible to be Jews. What, I, I don't understand. Pope is not responsible to be a Jew. The Pope is a good Christian. What do you want from him? No. What do you want from the remaining Arabian Christians to be a Christian? A Jew who becomes a not Jew is a by Judaism. He's still a Jew forever. Yeah, we are so supposed to eradicate from our land the idol worship by a Jew. We're talking about a Jewish person here who goes out of his way to reject the covenant of God. Not the, not the non-Jew who becomes goes to church. It's not, a, it's not our business. Okay. No, no, no. no. You don't, it's, it's, we, we change the topic a little bit. Okay. So, in the land of Israel or in the shul or in the community, if you see something that shouldn't be done, done, and you have the ability and you have the responsibility to do something about it, then if you don't, you are responsible almost like you did it yourself, like you are responsible. So the whole people get punished. So what happens all of a sudden, according to the sin the Farshim are called this way, is the people who heard Moshe say this, imagine, right? Moshe is saying this, if one individual somewhere in Spot, he's sitting in his house and he bows down to an idol. Mean to say, if somebody's sitting in Spot and he bows down to an idol and he rejects God's covenant, then all the country is going to be destroyed? What kind?
kind of a what kind of a terrible thing are you telling us, Moshe? Right? I'm, I'm either I'm living in uh, Be'er Sheva and I'm going to get destroyed because there's somebody up in Spot who's in his, sitting in his house and sitting in a, uh, worshiping an idol. Doesn't sound reasonable. It's terrible. You can't do this to us, Moshe. Right? So his answer to them is, I want you to know I'm not talking about somebody in Spot in his basement serving an idol. I want you to know it is only those things which you know, which are open, which are visible to everybody that is happening, and you don't do anything about it, that you will be held responsible. It's not something in hiding. But if you knew? Only if you know. Okay. Only if it's visible, right? Then you are responsible. And that's how they understand the next pasuk. Look at the next pasuk, number 25. So said, uh, um, they went and served... 25, 28, sorry. Okay. Misprint. 28. Yeah. Hidden sins are for Hashem, our God, but these revealed sins are for us and our children forever to carry out all the works of the Torah. You understand? Do you hear what he said? I know you were. Anista wrote, after we just finished this, you don't have a Bible, right? Drink it. They will say, they will answer. It, you know why this terrible destruction happened? Because they left the covenant and da da da, and that's why he sent them out of his country and he destroyed the land and da da da. Mm -hmm. Last, next sentence. The Hanistarot, La Shemalokainu, the hidden things are up to God. But those things which are revealed are upon us and our children forever. La Sot, it's called the Torah, to do all this Torah. Now, without this explanation that I just gave you, what's that sentence doing there? We just now talked about an individual who does a terrible thing, right? he goes away from God and he worships other idols or a family or a tribe, and he gets terribly punished by Shem will be angry at him. And he will be angry at the rest of the people, like you, like you said, who become tempted and maybe become the same way. And he sends them out and people will say, how come this all happened? It happened because they rebelled against God's covenant. Period. Next sentence. The hidden things are up to God, and the, and the visible things are up to us to do to uphold this Torah. Where did that come from? Out of clear blue, right? But according to you, it does make sense, right? An individual does that terrible thing. Hashem will be angry at him, but he wants you to know that since you were you were able to change what was going on and you did not, then Hashem will be angry at all the people. And people will wonder one day why that was, and they will say because the people rejected God's covenant by allowing one person to, or a one tribe to be getting away with that, right, among their midst, and he sent them out of the country. So then people wonder, you mean we're gonna be responsible for somebody in his basement to, to, who, who, is, uh, who is worshiping an idol? No, 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 Moshe says. I want you to know. The hidden things, when a person is rejecting God's covenant and hiding, that's up to God. He'll take care of that. That's not, you're not going to be punished for that. Right? But the revealed things, the things that are visible, are your responsibility and your children's responsibility always to do what's necessary to uphold the Torah. You get it? I mean, so you're, the Arevut, the business is being done here now. And why should Arihut be emphasized by Moshe at this time? Because Eretz Yisrael will be built on Arihut. In, in the Midbar, you know, there was Moshe, there was the Mishkan, the people all surrounded, and Arihut is not that uh, essential, right? But he's telling you, listen, you're going to go into a country now, and you're going to run the show, right? So the, per the idea of Arihut, of responsibility to other individuals, right? Like the Arur has a, has a load that will not uphold the Torah. And like this, right? And that's why he tells them, listen, Hashem didn't make this covenant only with us who are sitting here, but with all of the generations to come, right? So this covenant will be incumbent upon everybody in the future, and all the people are responsible for the covenant that be carried out in, in Israel as well, right? By others as well. And you're responsible. You'll be taken to task if an individual or a tribe or a family is yeah, we flaunt, flaunting openly, flaunting openly the rejection of the covenant. You know what I mean? So that's kind of the stream of these two kings make a little more sense now, right? But we were responsible for the Merarim. 
No, no, you see, they not. You see, they, if, if the people there had said, the Moravian, let them talk, we're going to Israel anyway. So the Moravian would have been punished. They wouldn't have been punished because of the Moravian. They only got punished in the Moravian because they, like, 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 think it's scenario. The Moravian spoke, and they said, oh, we're not going, and they believed the Moravian, and they went against God and said, you don't take us into the land of Israel, we're going back to Egypt, and better. But they were responsible for what they did. They're not responsible for what the Moravian did. This is different. This is Pinky going to the yeshiva and learning like a tzaddik every day, day, even though he knows that John Doe out there is worshiping an idol. That is, is, he's not going after him. He's not influenced by him. He's just not going out of his way to correct him. And that's enough to make, God forbid, Pinky responsible. But it's only if it's, if it's on the other side of this door and Pinky doesn't know it, then it's hidden from Pinky. And that's for God to take care of. Don't worry about it. You, know, you won't be responsible to, do, to get uh, an inter a CIA. You're not responsible to use the CIA to figure out what everybody's doing in their private house. Yeah, that's yeah. not your job. That's God's job, right? He knows. He knows everything, and he'll take care of them, right? But on the gloat, the revealed things are your responsibility. He's responsible for WikiLeaks. Right, so the Ramban, in this, uh, in this thing, he says, Galuta Uma Yisraelit Kulame Admata. In Pasuk Chavzayim, page Taf Ayin Tet, 27, Pasuk 27 in the Ramban. I'm sorry? Do you have it? Yeah. 27. 20, Pasuk 27, yeah. In chapter 29, chapter 29, verse 27. Uh, chapter 29. Pasuk yeah. 27. Do you have that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Hashem removed them from upon their soil with anger. With yeah, so it says, Ki yigle ha shevet haoseh hara beine Hashem, ki inyan va yigleim la ruveini ve la gadi. So it sounds, so at first he goes and he tries to stay away from the problem. And he says, you know what? It says a tribe, just like we wanted to answer. It says a tribe. So when Hashem is going to destroy something and people will say, why did that happen? They're talking about that tribe's place. That is where the stone and the mola and the destruction will be. Not on the other tribe. At first. Mm -hmm. so that's one way of answering the question. Remember I had the question before and you said that maybe it's only a group. And including that is the punishment to only the group. Right? It says, but uh, however, Vanachon <laughs> Beinai. Kanavon. Ki atayir mozle galut kol Yisrael. So the Raman avoids the problem. And he says like you, you know what we're talking about? An individual, a family or a tribe, he will be, Hashem will be very angry and then destroy them. Right, correct. And if all of you, all of you, become as bad as him, like you said, like you said, that's one answer, then Hashem will also be angry at all of you. You have to add that sentence there, right? Galut kol Yisrael al kulam ra'im. So the Rambam does not give your answer. He gives his answer. But, but in the case of, of Pinky, he talked to the people that he's making bad things. And the people doesn't care. So what happened? He's going to be punished because if, if you're, if he you're, talked to him. In your answer. In your answer. Exactly. Right? In your answer. Exactly. Well, he took care if, of, these, of these seniors. If you try to do what you can do and you could not do anything about it, so you're not punished. Yeah. Correct. But depending on what you can do, you can do by talk today. You would have to do talking to him, right? You can't you can't kill him because you're not allowed to execute anybody because you have no authority, right? But at the time of the land of Israel, there were courts mm -hmm. and there were witnesses and there were ways of the society taking care of this. They could first warn him and they could try to avoid it to make sure that he doesn't do it. And then if if he says anyway, then you could punish him, right? And then you would be responsible if you don't carry it out. It depends what, when, when you're living and where you're living. I mean, right. Okay.
So the Ramban does not use the, the answer of the Arevut. You see, you notice that? Good. And then he says, and he starot la Shem Elokeinu, 28. Look at 28 in the Ramban. Al dat ha mefarshim yomar ki ha Shem Elokeinu lo ya la'asot, Elokeinu lo la'asot mishpat ba'avudei ha'avud ha'zara b'seter. Hashem will, it's his job to do justice against those who do idol worship in hiding. Ki kol ha'hit ha'ta'alumot gluyot lefanav, because all secrets are revealed before him. Va'niglot aleinu almanin la'asot lahem et kol tifei ha'torah azot la'akot ofdei ha'torah zakedin ha'torah. And but it's our responsibility to punish those people that we can see, that we know, right? Gam kefi ha'midrash kenu. So, all of a sudden, it sounds like this sentence at the end, is it going to change his mind about the way the whole uh, series of Sukkim go? You know, you know what I mean? You know, what's this Pasuk talking about? What, why is Hashem talking all of a sudden at the end of this Parsha that the revealed things are up to you, but the, the hidden things are up to God? So he says, V'da'ati b'der hapshat. And uh, I, I want to tell you this plain understanding of the Pasuk. Ki hanista wrote... The hidden things, he machataim anistarim me an ausimotam. He does he goes back to his original answer. He says, you know what? You can sometimes do something bad yourself. Not you, not you, me, me. I can do something bad myself and I'm not even aware of it. Right? Let's say a person thinks that something is kosher and he buys something that he thinks is kosher and it turns out that it's great. Why is it great? Because the the buy the person who sold it to him, the chicken, right? He bought a chicken from a kosher butcher and he thinks everything's fine. But the kosher butcher sold him a chicken that's not kosher because he wanted to make money. So he bought chickens that are not really kosher, that are cheaper, and then he sells it with, as though it was kosher. So every, every, you know, I buy that chicken, I, I don't know that I'm eating something not kosher, right? So then after that, I find out, I find out that this person is a, is a crook and he sold me a non-kosher chicken and I ate it. So I feel terrible because I committed a sin, I think, right? Because I ate a non-kosher chicken and I'm going, it's terrible what, what happens to me. It's on, on my head. I feel guilty, right? So, hidden, completely unknown. So, according to my understanding, the Ramban says, is you should know that sins which are hidden from the people who do them, from the person himself, because it's like a mistake that somebody doesn't understand. Who is it that understands the hidden? That is Hashem himself. And therefore, we do not have a sin when we do that kind of a sin. We don't. But I mean, gloat, that's which is revealed. That is the intentional transgressions, right? The things that we do purposely with knowledge. That is our responsibility and our children forever to do the Torah forever. Because that's what that's what we accepted upon ourselves, to do that which we know that we are aware of. The, the curse that he just now talked about, the person who transgresses is only those who do it purposefully, but not the one who's doing it by mistake. With the very uncle's Matin came, Shamar the Matamran Kadamir, Vim Kinver of Hashim Rawilo Lomar and the Ramban. This Aramaic book. So the Ramban for me, for my mind, is a bit difficult because there is no reason to imagine, Pinky, at the end of this paragraph that we just now talked about, this person who says to himself, I don't care, I will go after what I want. Right? And Hashem saying, I'm going to be angry at him. And then I'm going to be angry at the entire people for whatever reason, da 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 da. He said, when they all become bad, then I will be angry at the entire people. That's the Ramban up here, right? All of a sudden, after all of that, Hashem says to you, I want you to remember, though, that I'm not talking about shgada, I'm not talking about uh, inadvertent sins, I'm talking about purposeful sins. Well, of course, the whole, the whole chapter has been talking about purposeful sins because these are rebellious people, right? either an individual or a shepherd or a tribe, or the whole people. So how could you have it both ways? What's that Pasuk doing here? You'd have to jump back 
See, according to him, you have to jump back and says, Et yeshno bi panu ayom. You know, I'm, I'm doing this covenant to keep this whole Torah, not only with you, but with all your generations after you. And then you skip that entire paragraph, and then you go and you say, but I mean the things that you do purposely and not the things that you don't do purposely, by mistake. You know, to go back all the way to the Et Tashay yeshno bi panu ayom. You know what the problem is? You understand that the Ramban is very difficult that way. What's that sentence doing here? It doesn't belong here. It belongs somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. You see, yeah, so that means it doesn't belong here. It's over there. I mean, that's why the gods are here. Yeah, so why write it that way? I don't know. So why write it here? Yeah, I mean, okay, so I mean, there, that, is a, that is an interesting thing that people ask. Why is it that it's got dots? Fine. But... But if that if those dots are indicating that this belongs before, then why not write it before? See, the Ramban, if you remember, the Ramban does not like Mugdam and Mu'achar Torah. He doesn't like it. He doesn't have to. Unless you have to do it. He, unless you have to. Right. So the question, according to his own policy, this would indicate a problem for me in the Ramban, right? Because he says he wants you to understand that we're talking about... And therefore, since he talked about the curse of the people who do it, he wants you to know that it's only those people who do it purposely. So it belongs there, not here. It belongs... Uh, uh, it belongs in Pasuk 14, 15, 16, before it talks about you know, you know what it was like in Mitzrayim and you saw all those idols and you saw them and what they worshipped and lest there be anyone among you who wants to go after that and say to himself, I feel like doing it and I don't care, then da 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 We're not talking about by mistake. So I find this Ramban very tough. Because you gave the answer, a different kind of answer, right? It's the Arevut. Kol Yisrael Arevim. And that, at the end of that paragraph of Arevut, and the punishment that comes to Arevim who don't do something about it, comes the answer, right? That you are only Arevim for those things that you could have known, that you did know. But not to the things that are not revealed, right? You cannot be responsible in your society for things that are done badly, that you did not know, right? Remember, you might ask me a question about why is it then that if somebody is killed between two cities, remember, and you measure which city it is closer to, and then those people from that city, the elders of that people, that city have to come and sacrifice and, and, and slaughter a cow, a calf at this place, and this place will forever not be anything growing on it, and they have to say, our hands have not spilt this land, this person's blood, please forgive the Jewish people, right? So, I mean, this was done in the dark one night, mm -hmm. somebody killed somebody, right? It was hidden, mm -hmm. nobody knew. So why do they have to come and make this kind of semi-confession about uh, what I've happened here? When if Hashem says that which is hidden is not your responsibility, why is it uh, their responsibility? Pinky, yeah. Hashem just now said the things that are hidden are not are not your problem. I'll take care of that. Yeah. Right? So you have to answer. You have to answer that answer. You have to answer that question, right? So the answer is that things that are hidden are not what you think, what, what we think, that somebody's doing something and hiding. Hidden things that are done, like a murder, right, in a certain society, is not just not your responsibility because somebody killed somebody and hidden and I didn't see them, so I didn't stop them, right? But there are a lot of the questions will talk about why this town is responsible. They didn't have a good police force. So that things that are hidden that are terrible shouldn't be done. They didn't, this person who was coming and traveling near them, they didn't have a hospitality, they didn't give him food and, and, and escort him on the way. So something hidden was done, right? They, even maybe the murderer was desperate and hungry and poor and they never gave him staka, so the murderer was desperate and killed somebody. But it is your 
responsibility. Even sometimes when something is hidden, the action is hidden, but not the well, environment in which you live, you could have done something about it before it happened, right? That's not, so to, to think that hidden things are not your responsibility is too simple. It's much more complicated. This person who's idol worshiping, you know, he was once in the yeshiva, and he has learning disabilities, let's say. He can't read very well, can't learn how to read very well. So the teacher says, ah, oh, you jerk, you don't know how to learn, you don't want to learn, you're a terrible boy. Right? So then he gets angry, the boy, and he goes away from the yeshiva and he goes out and he hates rabbis now, right? And he goes and I words, worships idols because he can't stand Judaism. Judaism was terrible for him. So he, he worships idols. In hiding, in his basement. That's not the same hidden thing that you don't are not responsible for. Mm -hmm. You are responsible for that, right? Because it's a product of the, he is a product of the society. You might be punished for such a thing happening, right? Because you didn't pay attention to the kinds of things that are done that bring about that kind of problem. So it's not so simple that, oh, he's in the basement, it's not my problem, right? It is a problem, right? So Hashem might take this, the responsibility to the entire people if the action is done even in a hidden room, but it's done as a result of the things that people should have done differently, right? It's complicated, right? It's complicated. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean that you don't that you're not responsible. Sometimes. Sometimes, right? If you have nothing to do with it at all, at all, and somebody's a rebel, okay. Yeah, but there's always potentially something that, you know, is a cascade, is an event that carried into another event that carries into another event, and then you have this problem. So it's an interesting thing that Hanista wrote is a seemingly contradictory to the, to the Egla Rupa. And yet we see that in the Egla Rupa, in this business of the murdered person, you see that the responsibility is even for something hidden, if, if that hidden thing happens in a roundabout way from a responsibility of the community. As for say in the case of, we saw, no in Israel, but as we saw recently with the beheaded people, people's fears, they, the government didn't care about these guys and let this ISIS to kill them and to them. Could, could be one of these cases. So there, the there, case are some, there are some complaints that America could have done something to save them more than they did. I don't know, I'm, I can't decide. But if you think that, uh, if it is true, if it is true that we could have saved somebody and we didn't save it somebody, then, uh, then we are responsible also. I'm not sure that is a good example, because I'm not sure there would have been anything that could, they could do. So I'm not going to be a politician, I can't answer that question. But yes, if it's so, then it's so. Mm -hmm. There is a note here about the Ramban. It says, Ramban does not mean that one who sins unintentionally is blameless. Certainly, he bears a degree of responsibility as evidenced by the fact that in many cases he is required to bring an offering as an atonement. Mm -hmm. However, he is far less blameworthy that one who sins knowingly and moses thus excluded him from the curse. Right, because this is a really, this is severe, right? It's going to be total destruction and so on. It doesn't mean that you, if you make a mistake, like I did, buying that chicken, right, that wasn't kosher, that would be called honest. I mean, I don't think that's a, uh, that's not a mistake. But let's say if it's Shabbat today, right? Let's say it's Shabbat today. And I forget that it's Shabbat. Mm -hmm. And I go into my car and I drive my car. I, I think I'm doing something right, because it's like Sunday. I think it's Sunday. And it's really Shabbat. So that's a mistake, right? That's a mistake. But I can't say it's not my fault at all, because I'm not, I'm not crazy, right? Uh, I have a calendar. I know that uh, Shabbat comes every week. It's true that when I turned on my car, I wasn't aware of Shabbat, but I should have known that it was Shabbat. There's a certain responsibility in a mistake like that, right? What's the matter with you? You're not uh, care that which day is Shabbat? So you made a mistake. It's true, when you turned on the car, you weren't purposely doing something on Shabbat, but you should have known on Shabbat, right? So there's certain mistakes that are responsible. Right? But okay. certain mistakes when called shogun. Yeah, that's called shogun. Yeah, and therefore you have to 
bring an offering or an atonement to feel like I know I should have known better. But, 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 but there's no, what time? But, but, but. An onus doesn't bring a chayva. He's totally patur. That's the point. I mean, if somebody sells you something that's kosher, and you went to a kosher butcher that has a hechsher, that has a, the, the rabbis have a note on it that says it's kosher, and he sells you, he sells you a, a non-kosher piece of meat. It's nothing you could have done that would have prepared you to, to avoid that mistake, right? So that kind of mistake, you don't have to bring the offering. You don't, you don't have to feel bad about it. There are people here who went crazy. It was an event that happened in Muncie. There was a person who did that. People afterwards thought, oh my goodness, my, you know. And the answer is, from the rabbi Gottfried also spoke about that. You don't have to feel guilty at all. There are mystics. There are mystics. Here's where Kabbalah sometimes is a dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. Because there are mystics who say when you eat something not kosher, it has a, an effect on your soul. Tintumale. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it doesn't matter that you weren't responsible, but you are now ruined, you're somehow spoiled, you're somehow contaminated. That's a, that's a dangerous thing, because people like that walk around now, who believe this, right? They walk around now somehow that they are dirty. Mm -hmm. right? Sometimes, well, you know, that's a very painful thing to convince somebody of, right? And to try to take away that feeling from them is very difficult if they have Kabbalah telling them this. Yes. You have to be careful about Kabbalah. Right. I choose not to hear about this sorrow. Yeah. But that's okay. not good. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so that... Uh, hmm. Verse 30. So that is a very fascinating, and I don't understand how the Ramban gets away with this. Uh, I think we should have... It might have been more strategic. Yes, so uh, to do... To read the Ramban. On... On Rit Barich Bilbo. Which one of the first ones? Who is he talking about? To, um, to this? You think that would help us? I think reading what the Ramban said might help us to understand what he So I'm ready. To understand what he said. I'm, I'm ready. But By the way, I mean, the whole Parsha suggests what, what he said is our good. You are all as a group standing before God. You're all responsible for each other. Da 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 da. A rebut was supposed to have actually been established in our vote Moab, not in Har Sinai. You know what I mean? That's a, the whole Kol Yisrael Arivim is established here. So his answer to this whole parsha works well because it really fits in with the whole. All right, background, and, and maybe he will even have that background, and then we don't understand how he falls away from it at the end. You want to do that uh, part of the Ramban? It's fine. Which one? The very beginning? Or, or Pen Yesh Bachem? Where do you want to go? Okay. So, if you go to verse 17 in that, part, in that chapter, in the Ramban, 17. Oh. <laughs> uh, I guess 15. 14 and 15. The Ramban wants to, he's using that as an introduction. He says, uh, I'm giving that covenant now, not only with those who are here now, but even the generations to come. You see that 14? Even the generations that will come. 14, right? And then 15, ki atem yidatem, the Torah says, because you have been in Mitzrayim, right? And you saw the worshiping of the idols there. So he says, the Ramban says, klefisha vitemetu motov de azara, right? The people who were born in the desert never saw Abu Dazara. The people who were born in the desert walked around with the Mishkan. Yeah. Right? So they're not uh, affected at all. Mm -hmm. Right? But you who were in Mitzrayim. Mm -hmm. By the way, who is in Mitzrayim? Nobody. That's die. a problem. They all died. They all died. He's talking to this new generation. Which is a problem. Right? You were here in Mitzrayim and saw the idol worship visit and the, and, the parsh, and the Ramban wants to say because you saw the nations who worshipped idols, maybe your heart is drawn after that. So he says, you notice, he saw nations. He didn't say Mitzrayim. So it's true that people, even in the desert, 
let's assume the people in the desert, they, who did they see that I worshiped idols? The new generation, you saw Ammon and Moab and Sichon, you know, the, and Midran. Remember Midran, the, the weird girl who came and uh, drew them after idol worshiping? So you saw worshiping of idols here, you, you, this generation. So your children who will come after you have to learn from you what you shouldn't do, right? Because they're gonna go into the land of Israel of course, they're going to see I worship them there, but uh, so I'm not sure how there's a difference between them. But, Ten years but okay. they were they were they were embraced for the I worship. That, that because being has Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. So you have to know that you have to resist that. You saw what happened when that when that occurred, right? You saw that you were banished, so it was terrible. And now Hashem is making this covenant with you, so never again, right? So now it's 17. He says, therefore. I have to make you swear that you will never do this because you were enticed by this when you saw other nations, right? Lashon Rashi. Because there might be a minority among you who will be drawn after this kind of idol worship like you did with the Egel, that's why I now I'm making this vow and this curse before you, right? Oh, she could say Amon, Moab. So you answer that question that it's not only Mitzrayim. Asher v'yitem baderek. Kasher ayalachem v'baal pa'or, right? Ki babrita rishona shel sha'at matan Torah lo hayusham alot v'kladot. You notice? When we had the, the covenant at Har Sinai, he didn't say, you must not worship any other idols. And the Ten Commandments, the Second Commandment, right? And he didn't say there, and if you do, I'm going to make a curse and it's going to be terrible and I'm making you swear that you will never do this and if you do, then you will be punished. Not too much. There is. There is a little bit about bloaty side, shame Hashem Rashad, ki right but anyway he says right there was no great curses these kir isha isha and here he says either a man or a woman nifnesha isha da takala aleha i'm going to skip this part vegen ya se binyan avodazara right these kir yechidim u mishpacha veshevet and he's going to mention a person a man or a woman or a family or a tribe like like pinky pointed out Shehu Amrav, because that will be like a large group. Velo Amar al Kulam, Derech Kavod. And he really meant, he really meant a person or a family or a tribe or all the people. He meant that. But he didn't want to say or all the people because he can't insult them that, uh, you know, it might be that all of you will be. Right? He really means that to, to both. He's answering our question by saying that the curse actually applies to all as well, and therefore this cascade of the curses from the individual to the whole people is actually what he meant to say, right from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Right, so the Ramban has a, you're right, it answers the Ramban's issue completely. I mean, in other words, he doesn't have to say anything about all of them tempted by this one person. He says, if one, or a family, or a tribe, or, Okay. In parentheses, or all of you, but I don't want to mention all of you because, oh, chas shalom, I wouldn't, you know, uh, um, her- perish the thought, so to speak, right? Uh, I can't even say it. But I mean, can't even say it. That's quite something. That's quite something to say that the Torah really meant to say that, but uh, impossible to imagine such a thing, impossible to even say such a thing, God forbid, so to speak, yes? Mm-hmm. Or it's impossible. It sounds, maybe it seems impossible that all the people will go after Avodazara. All the people, there won't be even one holdout, no pinky, mm-hmm. even among them. Impossible, right? It's, it's sort of. Because they're not going to enter the covenant now and say, yes, we swear that we're always going to be true to you. And he's saying, maybe there's going to be among you now somebody who says, oh, I know everybody's swearing, but I'm not going to swear. I don't, I don't really mean it, right? He's talking about somebody now who's saying, who's saying this to himself. So imagine he would say, I know that you're all swearing to, to God to keep his covenant, right? 
But lest in case, just in case, there is among you a man or a woman or an individual or a family or a tribe even who is saying right now, I know that we're swearing this, but I don't really mean it. And even maybe all of you are saying this? That's almost impossible, right? That all of them are saying, yes, yes, God, we're going to do this and we swear allegiance to you. And there isn't a person there who, who feels otherwise. I mean, it's ridiculous, right? Because who is forcing them now to go into this covenant? About mishpacha or shevet, but a family or a group of people, yavo bivrit mitnei pachad arov, right? You've got six million people making this vow, right? And let's say there's 14 people here who are saying, eh, I don't, I don't like this vow. They wouldn't say anything, right? Because the rest of the people will just wipe them out. I mean, so they'll keep quiet and they'll say in their heart, let them swear, and I will do what I feel like doing. That's what he's trying to say. Right now there are people like that. Maybe a group, maybe a little cabal, conspiracy, you know, oh, don't tell anybody, but we're going to do otherwise, right? So they will be quiet, right? But imagine the whole people will feel that way, and Moshe is making them swear, and everybody's swearing, and everybody doesn't mean it. It's impossible, right? It doesn't sound like it. Ve'amar, pen yishpachem, asher libo pone hayom, like today, Somebody's heart is moving away. El hanafat, el hanifte, kvar This is a person who already intends to do avodah zarah. Vehu belibo ma'amin ba hayom azeh. And he believes in idol worship today, right now. O pen yesh lachem shorish, rashi yifrachvi shgeh biyamim abayim, yotzim frachim raim. Just like when he's talking about this uh, root that will flower in the future, he's talking about somebody who today might mean the vow, but he will eventually develop to, like a flower later on, to do something bad, right? Mm -hmm. That's what he's talking about, the person who is not here with us. He's talking about us. Yeah. Now you got to watch out for what the Ramban is saying. Because the father who is here now doing the vow mm -hmm. between God is, is the root from which the son comes. Mm -hmm. Right? His son comes. Shoresh, and he mentions the root here now. This person who is here now can accept the vow of curses for generations to come. Now that's a big, big, big statement, right? Binky says to God, I accept and I swear to you that I will be forever faithful to you. Not only me, and I, and I accept the punishment in our, if I don't do it. And not only me, but I accept the fact that my 15th generation after me is also swearing, is under a vow to you, and also they will be responsible to take, to accept upon themselves this curse if they don't do it. The 15th generation says to Pinky, listen Pinky, you, you want to swear to God that you want to keep God's covenant, yet you're very, uh, it's very nice of you, and you are uh, an individual, you're free to do so, right? But what are you swearing for me? Mm -hmm. I live in Paris, you know, 20 generations, 100 generations later, and I uh, fell in love with a Scandinavian uh, stewardess who goes to church, and I think it's very nice. So I'm going to do the same. Well, you, you swore, so I am bound by your vow. Big, 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 big statement. Can a nation make a swearing to God 2,000 years ago that is bound on me today? So God says, yes, I want you to know all of you are standing here. I am establishing this covenant with all those who are standing here, and not only with you who are standing here, but all the generations to come. This vow and this curse and this responsibility is not only on you, but on all the generations, and they say, fine, yes. Whether they like it or not. So he says, yes, that's right. So this, that's what he means by the root. The root is making the vow for the flower. Later on, right. the root, that is, the person who is standing before God now, 
is before God, and that will give rise to the plant later on. For who Bob Rita Alazot, and he is coming with you in his body. Now that's quite, uh, you know, you can discuss this for a hundred years. I mean, where does this come from? This idea that everybody who is going to be born from what will be born, will be born, will be born, will be born forever is bound by this vow. I'm I'm leaving this for, for discussion, for thought, because it's quite a, it's quite a statement to say. I could say, I could say that God is going to hold me responsible for his covenant no matter what, whether I swore or not. But to say that my father who swore then is the vow that I have now is a little bit different. Okay. The Amar, Poresh Rosh, Pore Rosh, what do we mean by Pore Rosh? Your most key is Shoresh Matok Loyim Teimar. The Kola Sherli, the Go Shalem, the Mashem Anifad, the Lo Hir Hir, Klaal Baladaz, are a loyal lead Modeva. Did you see that sentence? Did you read what I just read? I'm afraid to translate it. Yes, it is quite, quite, quite a statement, don't you think? In the root of that comes bitterness. Quite a statement. Of course. He says that if somebody like that comes one day, then I know that this show I should not be quite sincere. If he was the late Shalane with me, it could not be that a child like that would come. Cannot give birth to someone who will confess and, uh, and absorb and uh, adopt the man. Could be in an action and prove otherwise. Yeah, the Bnei the sons of David, right? The children of David. Right? How can we say this? The Altik share alive by Zem in Akatu Boholid Ben Paris. There you go. He's asking, and what it, well, you know? Go tell, don't go tell me that there are psukim that talk about from Yechezkel, and so on and so on. There must be some, there must be some pasuk there that suggests that a person who is wonderful can give birth to a bad person. Because it is true, and it's quite a secret. <laughs> I can't explain it to you. I will not. I won't be able to describe it. You, you understand? He has said something very amazing. And in the end, he says, I, I, it is a, quite a secret and I cannot tell you. Now, whether he means that there is something deep down that is not quite perfect and a person whose child can do this, or whether he says that there's some other secret that I can't give you an answer to, I don't know what he means. I don't know what he means by that, right? But he's obviously not telling us. It's one of the great mysteries. So, I mean, you know, the, uh, David Tursky, the, the therapist, is, talks about this a lot because people sometimes come to him, parents, right? What did we do wrong? What did we do wrong? Our child became a criminal, terrible, drug addict, pimp, prostitute, terrible, terrible. And we, we lived all our lives thinking that we were doing a good job. And what happened? We must have done something wrong. Because from people who are good, something bad like that cannot come. Mm -hmm. Like the, mm -hmm. that's what the people say. And they, and they talk and they feel, they feel guilty for the rest of their lives. They feel guilty because they accept this kind of idea from something that is not sweet, can't come something bitter. Something sweet cannot come something bitter. How could it be? How could it be? So he, he, part of his job as a therapist is to explain to people that you do, can do everything that you are doing and you are doing right and you were wonderful and you were not bad and you did not do anything bad. And sometimes you have to accept the fact that people are free, even your child is totally free when he gets up and he may have all kinds of experiences that make him do a certain, you know, make him decide a certain way and it's not you. You didn't do anything wrong. And, and here, the Ramban is saying something that is very troubling, you know? Mm -hmm. 
but you are sincere, you feel you're sincere, and something from you comes not the way you hoped. Maybe there was something wrong with me these days, and it's a natural thing. Natural thing. And then he seems to support the idea. He says, though, it's a secret, no? Veroshalana, asavin marimo mimitim, you know, these are like poisonous uh, grasses. He's many vishmam king velashona kodesh, ohim kinuyim yikarea atad rosh, shahu rosh amorim in kulan, mar mi kulan, vashini yikaru la anam mimayim, minyan la anot mitnei, ki aochel oto migash venane, la anot nafsho yikarenu. Not important. He's trying to, to, to translate the words. What do you mean by, you know, la uh, ana? La ana is kind of a poison. Okay, so, you know, the, maybe among you there is someone who will give rise to something poisonous, meaning like that person who will rebel against God and do the Avodazara. It's a, a mashal, right? It's using it, right? Okay, so... That's quite a profound Ramban. It's got problems. And it's quite profound. He's talking to them who are there today, right? And he's saying to them, maybe among you there is a group, a person, who is really now thinking that they don't really mean this vow and they don't care. And maybe even all of you, in parenthesis, but I wouldn't even dare to say such a thing because it's so unlikely and so terrible to even imagine, right? And even the generations to come are really only coming from you and so on and so on, right? That's what Hashem is saying there. So this person now is standing before the vow and he is blessing his own heart, right? He blesses himself in his heart. 18. Mm -hmm. When he sees the other people ready to accept the curses even if they do go against God, he will bless himself in his heart and he will say to himself, Shalom Yeli, I will be at peace, Nikol Allah. I will be at peace from all of these curses, from all these punishments. As I go in my own desires. Hashem, yeah, and, and he wants to tell you, Hashem does. Hashem lo yislach lo. He will not forgive him. Aval yeshan alav apo. His anger will be kindled. As kashiyach teledor o ledorot. When he, ah, if he feels this way now, at the time of the vow, even if he sins later, or generations after him, Hashem will not forgive him. Hmm. Ah, you see, because the Pasuk, he's not being punished for the way he says, for what he says. It says, he, uh, he, feels, he feels that Hashem is going to be angry at him when he does transgress. Not while he says this to himself. The first, the first way the Ramban talks about, right? He won't, he won't forgive him and, he, and Hashem will be angry at him when he actually does sin. Hashem doesn't punish somebody before he sins, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say he's standing there at the time of the vow and he says, eh, I don't really care about this. I'm going to be all right even if I transgress. But he doesn't progress yet. He's still sitting in the desert, right? And he's going to go into Eretz Israel. And like, five years from now, he will find a way to, to transgress, right? So when is Hashem going to be angry at him? When is Hashem going to punish him? Well, when right. he does. When he does. Hashem doesn't punish somebody before he does. Except, very difficult, right? And that's why it never happened, right? But with regard to Yishmael, remember Yishmael? Yeah, when Ishmael was Ishmael. a child. Child, and, with and the angels and say, and the angels say, why are you saving him? He's going to be such a terrible man. Yes. Hashem says, listen, well, look at him now. Look at him people. now. Look at him now. Is he is he bad or is he good? We had to confess. He's okay. Yes. Look what we have now. What? Look what we have now. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Now, now you've got to re guilt and responsibility. If you don't, you don't. I mean, that's a, what? What do you want to propose? <laughs> What do you want to propose? That maybe it would be better to have to have done that? The angels were right. No, they weren't right. No, that's the point. They were not right. That's the lesson. Because of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because at this very moment he is no guilty of the what did this happen? I don't know that either. But who's wait a second. It's either or the either or? No, 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 no. The angels were wrong. 
the angels were wrong that you can't kill somebody who is innocent at the time. Okay. Right. So Hashem, wanted Hashem wanted to save somebody who was innocent. That's what Hashem wanted. Hashem wanted to have people free to behave the way they want to behave. It's kind of chaos to exist in the world. Free will, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, right. Don't call it chaos. Free will, yeah. Mm -hmm. 